Hello, everyone. I'm Denton Davidson for Gold Derby, and I'm chatting with Emmy nominee Maya Erskine, one of the stars, co-writers, and co-creators behind Hulu's hilarious comedy, Pen15. It tells the story of Maya and Anna, played by Anna Conkle, as they navigate the traumatic world of middle school. Uh, Maya, what was it about this age that made you want to create this show and put your own unique spin on it? Um, you know, I think at the time when we wrote it, we hadn't really seen anything that sort of accurately depicted that age in the way that we remembered it. You know, we always referred to it as a really R-rated time and a, a freak show of sorts. Like we were going through these extreme changes at such a high, you know, such a fast paced rate that it was like, your your brain was trying to catch up with your body and your emotions and all of these things that were happening. Um, and we were like, yeah, I haven't seen that depicted in a really accurate way, except for Welcome to the Dollhouse, you know, at the time. And so that was sort of our first goal was how do we show this age uh, in a, you know, in a real way? Um, you can't do that with actual 13 year olds because, you know, at our age, like kids were doing things that you, you, it would just be wrong to make a kid do that. So yeah. we thought, is there a way to put ourselves in that um, in that role to play those things, to give some distance? And what we found, and I don't think this was our intention when we you know, set out to make the show, but was that by having that distance, there was this perspective and there was this sort of like meta of, you know, going back into your life and reliving something that was traumatic and sort of getting another chance at it in some way, but that wasn't really the intention of the show at first. So interesting. <laughs> <laughs> this season, it takes a little bit more of an emotional journey. Um, I think there's, it's, it's still funny, but there's a little more drama. Is that something you wanted to use to evolve these characters in season two? Yeah, I mean, I think we always, you know, want the show to evolve because they're going to stay in seventh grade forever. And as we're making the show, we're changing as well. You know, like our perspectives are changing. And while the memories are still the same, there's sort of a different intention at each time we come to, you know, write, write the season or um, write episodes. Uh, I know that in the first season we wanted to play with having, you know, dramatic moments and funny moments just because that age is full of that. And we kind of always described it as an opera. It's like, you know, when you're 13, everything is life or death. It is so extreme for you. And so what's a way to show that, you know, that can be funny, but also can be heartbreaking because there were heartbreaking moments. I, that was a really, to sort of go back to your first question, I love this age because it was such a turning point for me, I feel like in growing up, like I had so many traumatic moments and I think a lot of people did. And I was very ashamed of those things that I felt like I was the only one going through like, you know, masturbation, whatever. Um, and yet I found that so many people can relate to it. And so that was sort of this beauty that came out of, you know, making this show. Um, it does take on a darker tone. Um, we wanted to get into more of the details of Anna's divorce in a way that wasn't sort of showing just snippets of it, but really like diving deep into that and the effects after and, you know, how that affects Anna um, post-divorce and then living in the same house. And, um, but yeah, uh, I think life is a mix of drama and comedy. So it's sort of, naturally comes into this show. Well, and this show, I think, uniquely shows how funny the most dramatic moments are. In right. Fact. <laughs> yes. Well, that's the thing is like, if you also had an actual 13 year old doing the things we were going through, I don't think it would be funny. I think it would be heartbreaking yeah. the whole time. Do you know what I mean? But as opposed, if you see us, you can, as an audience, maybe have relax in a way of like okay they have distance from that age so they're not it's not as heartbreaking it's funny it's it's you know insane yeah. and the first season was so well received you even got your first emmy nomination for writing what was that like and did that put a little more pressure on you for season two yes i mean 
first of all, we just thought that no one would watch the show. So to even have like a small group of people <laughs> liking the show and then to get review, I mean, it was insane. Like, I don't think we, we've always looked at ourselves as the underdogs and the rejects and kind of to, to get any acclaim or any, any positive review. It was just, it was really amazing. Um, and when we approached second season, I think we just had to keep reminding ourselves what we did in the first season, which was people may hate this. Like this may not go over well, like me putting out this scene that may, I may fail really horribly with that, but if we like it and if we sort of believe in it, then that's all that matters. So we had to keep like kind of instilling that in our heads to just remember as we're writing, no, 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 we're writing this. We got to think of it as what we want to write, not what we think the audience is going to want because that's going to get us into trouble. And this season opens at a pool party and Maya wants to confront Grant, who's sort of gaslighting her in a way because, I mean, yeah. he's making her see, feel like she wasn't just felt up at a dance. Um, <laughs> the entire sequence of Maya approaching him is so funny to me. So starting with the cannonball, as she follows him in, to the sort of shark swim with just the top of her bowl cut hovering above water. She's expecting to get romance, she gets rejection. Can you tell us how about filming that sequence and how you came up with everything that was going on? Um, so uh, <laughs> it's just very funny because we say like how this is based on a lot of you know, our lives at this age, but I didn't ever go to this extreme of stalking. I just want to say that, you know, just for the, uh, on the record. Um, but no, but when I was that age, I like, I crushed on so many people and I never got anywhere with them. Like it just never evolved into anything. They were just crushes from afar. And so we like to play with that idea of, uh, you know, Partly it's in Maya's head, but partly it's also what, like you're saying, Brant is doing in gaslighting of like, no, that didn't happen. Like, what are you talking about? And then saying the next second, like, but you're cute. You know, like that's sort of what I felt like I experienced. I thought guys were flirting with me, but then they weren't. They were really ashamed to be talking to me. So, um, so yeah, there was that. And I think sort of the, at least visual play of like the shark, you know, um, I, I forget how that came up in the writer's room, but just of like, you know, the bowl cut, like what would that look like? Like just literally a bowl on top of a pool skimming surface coming through. Like it, it's terrifying. Um, and we kind of wanted to play with it being a little horror-ish. Um, but uh, yeah, there's a, there's a good image, I think, what was it from, it was P.T. Anderson. I think it was the master, but there's like an image of um, Joaquin Phoenix of just like his his army helmet. And then it like comes up. And so I think that was the reference <laughs> that we stole from. Um, and the way the dialogue is and the way you acted out is so spot on for that age. Like everything is so lame until someone says it's not. And then it's so cool. Uh, how vivid are your memories from that time in your life? Because I feel like I blocked it out and this show is like yes. bringing back things to me that I had forgotten. I'm so sorry. Um, <laughs> I hope they were good memories. Um, they, uh, it's funny because a lot of people have that reaction where they're like, I've blocked it out. Like I've, I've definitely like pushed that away. And I think for me, because I just talked about it all the time. Like I talked about that age <laughs> all the time because so many of my like most embarrassing moments, uh, shameful moments came from that age. And I think where Anna and I sort of initially bonded was that what we realized was we used our things that were most shameful about uh, we used comedy to sort of um, make it feel okay. So I would like tell stories from that time that I felt really embarrassed about, but laugh about it. So then it sort of helped me feel better about it, but it didn't, it wasn't like true catharsis, but I think so. So it was just like constantly in my head because I talked about it all the time. But yeah, language was tough to remember. And definitely when we have kids now who are that age, 
they'll want to say, like, we had a girl be like, yes, queen. And I was like, no, I don't. We're not. That wasn't <laughs> we don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and I know you guys all sort of co-write a lot of this um, together, but one of the episodes you're credited for lead writing on is play. And mm -hmm. it's about Maya getting a lead in the school play and Anna sort of evolves into this monster stage manager. <laughs> Um, is this storyline inspired by your own experience in school theater as a kid? And was there a rivalry between actors and techies? Yeah, kind of. I mean, like I, I definitely was in, so theater was my like safe haven. When I was in middle school, I found community theater. I found theater in middle school. Sorry, there's a huge garbage truck. Can you hear it? <laughs> it's okay. No, we can't okay. hear it that well. Okay, good. <laughs> um, Bye. Uh, so there was, um, so theater at that time was sort of the place where I felt most accepted and I felt like I could let my Greek flag fly and it was really what saved me in middle school. And so uh, I definitely wanted to include it in some way. And, you know, we thought towards the end of the season would be great because it's really what we're also seeing is Maya finding her own place and Anna finding her own place, like their own power in a way separate from each other. I think they've been so dependent on each other to survive, which is really beautiful, but they also needed to kind of find their own paths. Mm -hmm. um, and when I was, I didn't include this in this episode because it just didn't work well, but I was in a play, uh, A Little Princess, Basically my pad flew out on stage. It's like a long story, but like my father picks me up and he's like, Sarah. And he like spins me around and my pad flew out on stage and I was hiding my period at the time. Um, the techies left a spotlight on it um, during like when it went to blackout. And it was, I don't, I'm still to this day, don't know if that was on purpose, if they were doing that as it, but you know, it was humiliating. And so I think there's, sort of that in my head and and I think you know the techies would sort of make fun of actors behind their back of like oh my god they're so they're so full of themselves and actors would make fun of techies so it was kind of just playing on you know all of those <laughs> and I love the play that's in this series and what was the inspiration of that play because I mean she keeps calling him a rat bastard that's like my favorite part uh, of all of it. Uh, what Aww. inspired you to have these two kids? Because it's sort of age inappropriate for, for Very. what you're doing. So what inspired yeah. you? Well, originally we wanted to do Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf. Like we wanted to do, because I remember doing plays at that age that were definitely like not for my age. Like I had no understanding of what I was doing, but I'd be like, you know, a boozy 40 year old woman at, at 13. Um, so I thought, that would be really fun, but we couldn't get the right. So I wrote my version of Who's Afraid of Virginia Woolf, kind of. And Dylan Gage, I just want to talk about him for Incredible. a second. He's so fantastic. He plays Gabe and him and Maya are the co-leads of the play and they decide to become actual boyfriend and girlfriend. Um, yeah. Well, well in rehearsals, even though he's internalizing this realization that he's actually gay. Um, yeah. what is it like act, acting opposites an actual teenager while you're just playing one? Sorry, that's my baby. Um, so acting opposite him, we got very close. Uh, Anna makes fun of me because she, there was like a time where she would, we, you know, Gabe, Dylan and I were, were, uh, doing the play and so we were seeing each other every day and like bonding and I I think I revert back to that age very easily or he's mature for his age I'm not sure there's maybe a median age where we meet at 16 of where we bond but um it's it feels like I'm just acting with my equal like I I'm not like he's and he's incredible and he's so fast and so smart and would improv like crazy um uh, way better than me. And so, um, it was a joy to act with him. And I felt like when we were doing the play within the show, we got to do it in an actual school theater. And I was like, oh my God, this is taking me back to being in middle school. And I felt like I was in a play with all these kids and I was the same age. It just was like, we're here, we're doing it. And I also love the scenes with Maya and her mom. And 
Mm-hmm. Even just the little moments that people could miss. There's a scene where Maya gets out of the car and leaves the door open and her mom's like, shut the door. She's like, oh, mom, just get it. Like, <laughs> like it's so perfect about like the disdain teenagers have for their parents and how uncool they are. And um, this is your real mother playing your yes. mother. And yeah. did that, did she expect to be in this series, first of all? And was that sort of no. cathartic or traumatizing to revisit your relationship <laughs> from that time period? Wow, well, okay. So there's a lot of things with this, but she didn't expect to be in the series. Um, that was a whole another story that's very funny, but she actually has just been thriving in it. Like she's so wonderful. Um, I, you know, I think I realized through writing this, what an asshole I was as at that age to my mother. And now that I've become a mother myself, I'm like, oh my God, the things that I said, the way that I treated you. And, you know, it's, I was so close to her and I, I love her so much and we're extremely close, but that age, like I really went through, I think a period where I was taking anger out on my mom because I was hating myself, you know, like I was so unhappy with who I was that I wasn't like the other girls in my class that my mother sort of was a mirror of me and was rep, you know, like she was everything that I was trying to get away from, which I now love. But I think at the time there was so much insecurity. So we wanted to play with that, that it's like so easy for girls at that age to sort of look at their moms and see themselves and kind of want to run away from it. Um, and, and I find that is very common that a lot of girls were like, yeah, I was awful to my mom at that age. Um, so we wanted to dive into that more for Anna and Maya. Um, but yeah, having the bath scenes and like talking with her and having those sort of like therapy moments that happened all the time in my life. So we'd have these like screaming fights, but then the bath was this place that sort of leveled us both. And we were able to like come together and just be and talk. And it was really, really important part of my life. Wow. Um, And one last thing, I spoke to Anna earlier this week and we talked about the Vendi Wickeny episode um, where her and Maya are casting spells. And the other kids are spying on you when you go into these sort of just like bizarre satanic chants. Um, (laughs) Is this all improv? And how do you and Anna get through scenes like this uh, without, I mean, how do you even get through a take without cracking each other up? This season, we definitely cracked up every single take. Like I don't even serious, like for some reason, I say this like with the first season, we didn't really crack up all that much except for the thong episode when she's pulling it like that one was really hard to edit because I was just like laughing the whole time because it was so stretchy the thong um but no this season we laughed a lot and I think because we sort of like took the pressure off us a bit when we were filming we were like we have to just have fun because we were so stressed the first season I think like sort of running around doing everything um but yeah, Vendi Wickeny for that, that's improv because <laughs> we like wrote some of the chant, but then after a certain point, we just have to like fly. And um, that was crazy because there was actual wind like blowing and it felt like we were like, the chanting was creating this like- it was Stirring things up. It was. Um, and yeah, that was nuts. There's, there's some of it where I'm like, crying and Anna's crying and we're like not breathing I mean we go too far I think um so that was like a middle place (laughs) well I thought it was fantastic um (laughs) Maya Erskine thanks for chatting with Gold Derby today and good luck with the upcoming Emmy season I want to encourage our viewers to head over to goldderby.com and make your awards predictions and uh see more interviews with top contenders like Maya here uh thanks again for talking to us about Pen15 thank you so much Thank you.